Hi, boys and girls. I greet you again today in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, our lesson today is not an easy one, but let's go through it. Let's pray first. Our Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you for the many Christians throughout the world. I thank you, Lord, that there are times where there are challenges, there are differences amongst us. But Lord, thank you that we are still called your children. Bless our time as we go through this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, boys and girls, the reason I say that today's lesson is not an easy one, but it's important that you know about it because you're going to grow up and you're going to see some of the things, if maybe now you can see them. <clears throat> when I was a young believer, um, we were not allowed to put on jeans when you're going to church. I don't know why. Girls were not allowed to put on trousers. You were also, girls, not allowed to put on lipstick or makeup. Um, for boys, you were not allowed to have a hairstyle that looked like that of women. Uh, even perming, it was a problem. Now, in Acts chapter 15, the church leaders had to tackle a very difficult issue. It was not plain sailing that they have received the Holy Spirit. They are going all over the place preaching and many people coming to know the Lord. Same thing today, boys and girls. Things are not as smooth as you might think. There are some differences. For us today, it might look obvious who was wrong and who was right. If you have, I want you to read Acts chapter 15 so that you hear the whole story. For the early Jewish Christians, circumcision was an important sign of their commitment to God. And boys and girls at that time, um, even today, is removing the skin in front of the boy's penis. God. So they doubted the Gentile Christians if they were not circumcised. How can you say you are uh, God's friend, you are a follower of Jesus if you are not circumcised? So they put that. Now, the decision which they got to at the end, if you have read Acts chapter 15, the, so that decision which the church council made was so important that it allowed Christianity to become a worldwide faith instead of just being a subset of Judaism just for the Jewish people. So how did the church leaders get to their decision? One, they had both sides of the argument. So today, boys and girls, if there's some kind of a difference, listen to both sides. Hear everyone. Don't quickly remove the other. Hear both sides. If you read in Acts chapter 15, verse 1 and 5, uh, this is what it says. Um, Certain people came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers, unless you are circumcised, according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. Already you can see that is wrong. But let's go to verse 5. He says, Then some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, The Gentiles must be circumcised and and required to keep the law of Moses. Yo. Number two. So we are saying how did the leaders get to their decision? Peter reminded them that years earlier, God had poured out his spirit on Gentile believers without wanting them to be circumcised. Acts 15 Verse 7 to 9, this is what it says. After much discussion, remember our friend Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago, God made a choice among you that the Gentiles must, might hear 
from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. God who knows the heart showed that he accepted them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. He did not discriminate between us and them for he purified their hearts by faith. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the, on the necks of the Gentiles a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors have been able to bear? That's the next thing. They were honest in checking themselves, their own ability. Could they keep those things, the laws, the rules they were trying to force on the Gentiles. And the last thing was, they were saved by faith, not obedience to the law. That's Acts chapter 15, verse 10 to 11. So, I have already read that. No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved just as they are. Um, sorry, I said the last one, but I still have some more. They listened to the missionaries of what actually was happening on the ground before they made their decision. In Acts chapter 15 verse 12 says, the whole assembly became silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul telling about the signs and wonders God had done among the Gentiles through them. Okay? So they listened to people who were on the ground and had seen what God was doing among the Gentiles and circumcised Gentiles. And more importantly for us boys and girls, even today, they checked the scriptures. Acts chapter 15, verse 15 to 18. So this is what it says in Acts chapter 15. The words of the prophets are in agreement with this as it is written. After this, I will return and rebuild David's fallen tent. Its ruins I will rebuild and I will restore it that the rest of mankind, everyone, may seek the Lord. Even all the Gentiles who bear my name, says the Lord, who does these things, things known from long ago. And circumcised Gentiles can be saved too. And finally, they came to a practical suggestion. That is in Acts chapter 15, 19 to 20. I'm going to read it. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write to them, telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from the meat of estranged animals and from blood. For the law of Moses has been preached in every city from the earliest times and it is read in synagogues on every Sabbath. Now, boys and girls, today the same issues come up, but they are different. Can different cultures worship together? People who look different in the color of their skin. Can they be in the same building worshiping God together? What about young people and old people? Can they worship together? You know, why I'm saying even today there could be some issues. I remember some few years ago, young people started coming to church with these dance styles that were, uh, the older people were a little worried. They were unhappy. This was in Bari. Um, and 
Some young people would have these women hairstyles. And the language, we couldn't understand it. And it was coming into church. It was making adults uncomfortable. And there were discussions about should we be allowing this in church? You know, there are people who are poor. Can they come and worship with those who are rich? Um, is it possible, boys and girls today, that you can talk to someone else who's different from you, who does things different? Maybe even the food they eat is different from what you eat. Where they stay is very different from where you stay. Is it possible that we can talk to them about Jesus and get saved? Or we want them to be like us before they can get saved? That's not what the Bible says. So we need to ask God for wisdom, like what the early church did. When they asked God, when they went through all those steps, more importantly, they searched the scriptures and the Holy Spirit guided them in making the right decisions. So, boys and girls, it's important not to discriminate by the way we look, to discriminate by the way we dress, whether we have money, we have no money, that I'm older than you, or I'm a boy, or I'm a girl, or I come from a rich place, or I'm poor. The message is the same. Jesus loves every boy and girl in this world today. He wants everyone to come to know him. Different languages, different cultures, everyone in the world. Only Jesus is the savior of the world. And we are saved by faith in him. Ephesians 2 verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. For those who are in torches in Awana, you know this scripture. So it is the gift of God. And that gift, boys and girls, does not depend on whether they are putting on a dress or a short or whatever. If you listen carefully, it's heart issues. You can be saved. Doesn't matter what you are like. You can become a Christian. And for you who is a Christian, you can reach out to anyone. You don't discriminate by whatever it is. You can talk to them about Jesus and they can also be saved. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for every boy and girl. That, Lord, as they grow, they may face discrimination. They may see things. There may be differences and all sorts of things. I pray that, God, they will stay. They will love Jesus. They will not give up to talk about you to everyone who looks like them, who is different from them, who behave differently, different cultures, but they will continue to share Jesus. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.